Hello guys, recently Anthropic introduced Cloud Opus 4.5 and I was waiting for a task suitable for that. A longer task, something to plan, a lot of files to generate and stuff like that. And I found the task and I tested Opus against Sonnet, Codex and Gemini 3 Pro. To all four of them I gave the same task to create a Laravel package. And I did it in two phases. Phase one was the plan mode and I did it all in cursor. So I would then compare the pricing as well on cursor dashboard. So a quick backstory, I was working on Laravel SaaS course and I built a team member functionality, team invitations and stuff like that. And then I decided why wouldn't it be a package for Laravel? So first I asked those AIs LMs to evaluate my idea, the plan mode in cursor. And my question is would it be possible worth to create and what are potential pitfalls and in this video I will show you the answers of all four of them and then I chose one plan to proceed and actually try to build the package. So in this video you will see whether the package creation was successful and which model performed best at that. First let's talk about planning and here are the results of four contestants. So I have saved those LLM answers in markdown files and I will show them here. So this is Opus version. Is it worth creating the package? Yes, but with caveats. And then it lists the caveats what to do. I'm sorry for my voice getting shaky here. So yeah, Opus is pretty good at planning and thinking and actually providing the potential pitfalls like major thing, then there's medium thing and stuff like that. So I liked the plan pretty good. Overall, the length is what 260 lines. And the final recommendation was to build the package, but with simpler scope. This is the version of Sonnet analysis based on my review. The answer is yes, definitely possible. Is it worth it? Maybe. So I generally like to use AIs and LLMs for brainstorming ideas like idea partner. So Sonnet also provided its recommendation with pitfalls with a bit different structure of the advice. The length is also pretty similar to 50 lines, but actually the recommendation, the final recommendation was don't package it yet. But still, if I do want to package, there's the plan above. So pretty good job. Next, I'll show you GPT-5 codex, also analyzed the plan, also providing pitfalls, tight coupling, probably same or similar things that Claude models listed. And at the end, the result is twice as short. So also a good plan, but probably fewer details mentioned. And then finally, we go to Gemini 3 Pro plan, which looks like this. 36 lines, just the list of what to do if I want to create the package, no analysis of any pitfalls, no code snippets, nothing. So it seems that Gemini 3 Pro is not a good model for planning phase. So if Gemini is not a contestant here, which plan should I have chosen out of those three? Codex plan, I thought it would be too short. And then Sonnet plan basically was, I felt it was too negative because the recommendation was to not start a package. But generally after reading both Sonnet and Opus plans, I was happy with both of them. But I decided to choose the Opus plan as kind of a winner and then give it to the same models for implementations. So Opus plan, but given to Opus, Sonnet, Codex and Gemini 3 Pro. But before I show the results of that, I want to show the prices for that planning prompt. So these are the numbers from my cursor dashboard. And as you can see, it's from 13 to 46 cents and Codex was the most expensive and by far the most amount of tokens. And Gemini was the cheapest, but didn't actually produce much of a result. And both Claude models are comparable with both amount of tokens and pricing, which seems to be reasonable. This pricing table was actually the reason why I chose cursor for all of them. So I didn't use Claude code or codex separately. Maybe the results would be different or similar with anti-gravity, maybe with Gemini. But to compare the price, I chose cursor. And by the way, in cursor, currently Opus model is the same price as Sonnet. So when that promotion is over for the same amount of tokens, the price of Opus will be, I think, three times higher. So from that point of view, probably for planning, you can use Sonnet as well. Now let's take a look whether those models actually produced a package from that plan. And this was my prompt that I gave to all those four models. Based on team package plan, which is planned by Opus, I asked to create a Laravel package with structure of 
internal package later to be released on GitHub. And now I will show you what they produced, the changes in the code, what they all one-shotted. So basically all delivered something. So none of those four models canceled or stopped or choked. They just delivered in roughly five to 10 minutes each. And this is on the screen. You see the GitHub commit from Opus. I'm using source tree to show that with a bit smaller font, sorry, but basically the list of files in that package. So the package has readme here generated with instructions how to install that package and then the internal files of that package. And the package seems to be installed locally already in my project with composer JSON. So on the surface, it looked okay, but when I tried to actually install it and use it, according to readme, so this is that readme in action with bigger font, so I was trying to follow that composer require, which failed because it was already installed, and then team invitation installed succeeded, so published the migrations, and basically that readme contained the manual instructions how to make changes. But what Opus did in this case, it renamed the table name from organization to team. As you will see later, none of the other models did that change, which means basically it was hard for me to test that package in the same project, which has field of organization ID, organization's database table. So I had to try to install that package almost from scratch and it failed at artisan migrate because that package in migration files contains this is admin, which already existed from my Laravel migrations. And this is the main challenge when creating packages in general, the package needs to be really flexible because you never know what's outside of that package, what's in the code of the project. So the right way or one of the ways would have been something like this, checking if the columns exist. So then at this point, I stopped with the integration because I realized how much more manual work it is to enable that package. Because according to readme, I need to call the new service of that package. And a lot of methods should be basically changed in my code from general Laravel code to calling something from the package. Now I will show you the result of Sonnet, roughly the same structure, packages, Laravel daily, the name of the package and a lot of files. But the difference with Sonnet was a lot of MD files. So package summary, migration guide, installation, license, quick start, readme. So a lot of useful or useless maybe information. And the most useful was package migration guide in the main folder. And I was trying to follow that with vendor publish and changing the user model. It was pretty clear and it kind of worked. So I went and changed quite a few things according to that guide and then tried to test it if it actually works. And again, the problem was not with the package, but with the code outside of the package. So when I changed the model, which was recommended by the package, the model from Laravel models to package models, globally, I deleted those models, or in fact, I renamed them, but it doesn't really matter. And then outside of that team invitation package, I go to register page of the website and registration fails because the registration Laravel file is expecting the models organization from Laravel. So that file doesn't know anything about the package. So again, same two issues. Packages need to be really flexible to know or guess what the user may have in their code and also quite a lot of manual changes to use a package like that. So this is where I started thinking that maybe the whole package idea wasn't so great. And now I will show you Codex and Gemini, which approached the task differently. So what they both did, they replaced my existing files with the package. So not only in Composer JSON, for example, Codex added the package, and by the way, the naming of the package. So both Claude models created the package as Laravel Daily, and then the package name, Team Invitations. Codex named the package as SAS Codex, the same as the folder name of the project. I'm not entirely sure how Claude detected that name of Laravel Daily, but somehow they did. So yeah, basically what Codex did overrode 
all my Laravel files, controllers, models, and everything to use the package code instead of my own. And at first I thought it may be genius, so I don't need to install anything myself, it actually may just work. And at first the results were promising, so the dashboard works, the team list works, but in Codex case I click on creating the user and then there's an error of not finding some component which should be inside of the package, so something with namespaces. I didn't dig deeper to investigate why. It just didn't work. And then finally Gemini result, but with Opus plan, again overriding my own files with package files and then in composer json the naming of the packages gemini teams invitations so it's thinking of the package as its own from the very beginning so it deleted a lot of my files the old models and again i thought maybe it's for the reason that it would work with already installed package internally but then when i tried to register i had the same error of model organization not found because duh, it was deleted and at this point i decided to stop and cancel my experiment with that package because it started reminding me of this classic tweet that claude refactored my entire code base none of it worked but boy was it beautiful so yeah all of those models delivered something but actually none of it worked from the first time and i know this sounds like a vibe coder mindset that i was expecting them to one shot the result but my idea was this that those llms would deliver kind of 80 percent working code and then i would debug and fix stuff manually but then i saw how much customizations are needed for that specific package and those files like migration guide and sonnet helped to realize how much customizations there are and i realized that this package is pretty risky because it may work in my laravel for example livewire starter kit but then it probably wouldn't work for others because the cases may be very different for current user table structure and others so this is why i canceled the idea of the package it was a good experiment also testing opus model along the way but i didn't proceed further than this and decided to just shoot this video as kind of a recap of the results and general impression of the models let's also look at the pricing so i already showed you the prices for the prompts for planning and those four on top are prices for actual implementation Again, GPT Codex most expensive, Gemini 3 Pro the cheapest, and then interestingly, Sonnet more expensive than Opus. But you know what? I like the result of Sonnet better than Opus. Even in the planning stage, if you think about it, Sonnet was right with the conclusion that don't package it yet because that was my ultimate conclusion as well. And also Sonnet providing those markdown files with instructions impressed me more and it was easier for me to test than Opus, which just isolated the package and I had to think pretty hard how to even test it. And again, with this pricing, I would probably compare Sonnet with Opus on the same level, but when Opus becomes much more expensive, then Sonnet is a no-brainer winner in this case. So all in all, did Opus 4.5 impress me, both for planning and implementation? Not really. In this particular case, with Cursor, Sonnet results was roughly the same, or sometimes even better. I chose Opus Plan, mostly because of the feeling that it was optimistic to deliver, but actually Sonnet Plan ended up being more correct or right, so to speak. So yeah, this is my story, my experiment, another proof that you just cannot one-shot complex tasks as a vibe coder. You need to be a developer digging deeper how to debug things, how to fix what LLMs missed, and stuff like that. And this is exactly what I will continue showing on this channel. Not vibe coder vibes, but more developer things, developer mindset, and developer experiments with LLMs. So subscribe to the channel and also subscribe to my weekly newsletter, which I send every Wednesday. Currently, I'm thinking to restructure that. So for now, it's a list of tweets and posts with the news with opinions by people, but I want to restructure that to be more about the tools and practical reviews of what works now currently, instead of just blindly following the trends and the newest models. So we'll see what happens next. If you want to follow my changes and the journey of that newsletter, the link will be in the description below. Every Wednesday, it is free. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.